Welcome to the Golf Coach Access weekly show where I'll take you through some of the challenges and issues that regular golfers have and I'll show you how we deal with it. If you like what you see, then please subscribe. Um, today's issue is around hitting the ball fat. So I had a couple of guys in this week who, um, who hit the ball nicely on the range, but when they're on the course, hit the ground. I hit the ground a lot and it was ruining their game. Is that technical or is it mental? Let's get started. frustrated when we've got sloppy technique um, and then you know getting anxious and thinking we've got uh, mental issues let's establish that we are have actually got the right kind of impact dynamics to deliver ball first then divot and of course that means having the uh, having the bottom of our swing arc on this side of the ball and for that to happen certain things need to be present to impact. So we know that we need good dynamics, i.e. we need the, the legs working first, we need the body pulling, we need the, the arms being dragged into impact with shaftling, as opposed to a kind of sloppy arms, um, wristy, scoopy action. So that's what I wanted to establish um, with this chat this week before we headed out onto the grass. So um, we had a session around the launch monitor. Now I can't measure exactly where the, the bottom of the arc is, but I can measure the loft of the club at impact. So this club starts, this is an eight iron, it starts with 38-ish degrees loft. Um, and my challenge was, can you, get, can you get the loft down to below 30 degrees at the point of impact? Because we know then that, you know, if the club is leaning forwards, it's moving down. You can't have a club leaning up, leaning back and moving down, that, that would just be odd. Can you have the club leaning forwards um, at the point of contact, and then we've got every chance of having a down, downwards angle of attack and that kind of ball first um, contact. And what happened was he had a few shots and sure enough he was hitting it with sometimes around 35 degrees, sometimes 40, 41. So it was uh, inconsistent and it was a little bit sloppy. And as I say, some of the times the club's leaning back and that means the bottom of the arc is back here behind the ball. So obviously you're gonna hit the ground first or the club's moving up and you'll be catching it off that, off that bottom edge. I mean, what I really wanted to do is I wanted to improve the, the, do some work on the downswing and get to the point where the, the club head is a little bit squarer midway down the, the downswing. And on, our, on my uh, premium Golf Coach Access channel, we talk a lot about how the, the club face needs to be parallel with the back midway down, because from there, all the player needs to do is to keep rotating the chest. And sure enough, we've then, we're then striking it with a square face that stays square for a good amount of time and we have inherently got this shaft limb. Well, I mean, the player I was working with um, was reluctant to make that change. In fact, he was reluctant to make any kind of real uh, meaningful change to his swing. And, you know, that was a challenge, but, you know, I, he was, um, his, his objections were, were valid. He said, look, you know, I play, I play golf for my buddies. I, uh, I'm, I like to compete, I like to score. I don't really want to make any changes to the swing, but I do want to hit the ball better. Okay, well that's not, you know, that's not entirely unworkable. It means we're not gonna have, um, have the, a swing that is, is, um, is working in all the right ways, but we can, we can find a way to create impact. So I gave him a challenge. Um, if he wasn't meaning to, to change his swing, we'll kind of lead him to it a, a different way. So the challenge was, and I went back to a, an old exercise I used to, to use called chip, pitch, punch, and that means starting with a few chip shots and then kind of progressing from there. So out on the range here, we've got two, two flags um, about 30 yards apart at 60 yards. And the challenge was, can you chip it? Can you just chip it low 60 yards? And of course, you know, the guy's off, off about 18. He knows how to chip it. He's going to lean forwards with a shaft lean and chip it. Now, at slow speeds, it's quite easy to hold on to, to shaft lean. So he did that. He chipped it 60 yards through the gap. Brilliant, that's our first low ball of the session. And then we had another go. And of course, as this is going on, I'm encouraging him to keep his chest turning through the ball and not just kind of drag on the handle. So we had another go and we said, you know, can you hit it a little bit further with that same motion? And for the first time, we got that sound of the map. We've got that thud in the map. And now the launch monitor is showing different data. So from, from a dynamic loft of 40 degrees, now we've got a different story. So I don't know whether you can, how well we can see that, but we now have dynamic loft here of 23 degrees and the angle of the tack 
angle of attack is significantly down. I mean, mine's 10 there, but he got his angle of attack down to, to five or six degrees, which was massive progress given that he was hitting up on the ball you know, when we started the session. Brilliant, now we're winning. And he doesn't feel like he's changing his swing, although he is actually making a much squarer motion down to the ball. The club isn't coming into the ball open in the way that it was um, in, in his, uh, what he felt was his full swing. So the challenge was then, can we continue hitting these, these chip shots, build it up into longer chip shots, longer pitches, full of swings, but with that intention of driving the ball low and forwards, and paying attention to that sound of the thud of the club into the mat. Now we've got something to, to work with, um, and I'm happy we can then take it to the course. So if all we have to do then to strike the ball first, then divot, is to have the, the body turning through, the ball in the right position, and the, and the club leaning forwards, then why do so many, so many of us struggle to, to strike it off the grass? Well, this was an interesting conversation I have um, probably on a weekly basis, and I had it this week with this, with this student. Um, through his kind of trials and errors and, and, and you know, anxieties over striking it off the mud, he'd convinced himself that if he keeps his head down and really staring at the ball and watching the club onto the ball, he's got a much higher um, chance of striking it well. So he's kind of pre presented this idea to me and he said, look, look, watch, watch me hit it and I'll, and I'll keep my head down. He obviously saw the kind of, you know, I was trying to hide it, but he obviously saw the, the expression on my face. Um, that, that is not the way to go. I am not, I, I not, would not a, a, at all encourage looking at the ball. In fact, I did an anecdotal study. We asked a lot of professionals. Some professionals said that they, you could change the colour of the ball in their, in their swing and they wouldn't even notice. That's the kind of level to which professionals look at the ball. And that's certainly consistent with my, um, with my experience of ball striking as well. But anyway, the, the guy was, was, um, was, was adamant and he was keen to show me how if he kept his head on the ball, he would strike it really well. And he struck it okay. I mean, we're hitting it off a mat. There might have been a bit of mat first, but the launch monitor doesn't lie. Um, all of a sudden he's now hit it with the club leaning backwards. So he's hit it with, you know, it starts with 38 degrees of loft, remember. He's hit it with like 41. So we know his dynamics are broken down. By, by trying to keep his head down and watch the club onto the ball, he's stopped moving as well, he's added loft, and the bottom of the arc is now behind the ball. And that is a recipe to hit the ball flat. So now we've established that we've got the, the correct impact dynamics, we've got the bottom of the arc past the ball, there is no technical reason why we should be hitting the ball fat. Now obviously when you're on the, on the course you need to adapt to the slope, but beyond that, can you make the same kind of swing that you made on the driving range? Well that was the challenge um, with this chap I had this week. So, you know, sure enough um, we had that kind of pitching drill, he's, he's hitting pitches, chips, pitches, punches, and really kind of learning to turn the body and keep the shaft leaning forwards. Can he take it to the course? Well, sure enough, we hit the first few balls and they were fat. I mean, he just immediately hit the ground um, before the ball. So now I'm thinking, hold on, that's, that's now no longer a technical issue, is it? That, that has to be somewhat psychological. And, um, and sure enough, he said, he said himself, he said, uh, he said, yeah, see, I knew it, it's, it's all in my mind. It's all in my mind. But when people say it's all in my mind, what does that, what does that even mean? I mean, we've got to be a bit more specific than that. So, I mean, at least we had the evidence. We had the, the launch monitor telling us that he's got the dynamics. He's got everything he needs to create ball first, then divot. So we just need to kind of draw that from him. Now, this goes back to the conversations that we had around ball focus on the driving range and really trying to keep your head on the ball and, and all that kind of sloppy dynamics that comes from that. So my goal really was, from a mental perspective, to get him away from that anxiety of ball strike and making that same confident, fluid movement that he made on the driving range. So this is what we did. So you know, he hit a few balls fat, and then we lined the balls up with the cane, and then I gave him the simple task of, can you focus on getting to the end of your backswing and then commit to a really confident, bold movement and hold the follow through? So we're taking his attention away from the ball and that the task has changed slightly from striking the ball to making a fluid swing and getting to the end. And we know from research that fo um, putting our focus beyond the ball uh, is, helps our dynamic and helps our strike. Having hit the first couple of balls fat then, we know it's a psychological issue. Let's do the challenge. Can you keep your attention on getting to the end of your backswing and then commit to a bold movement and just get to the end of the follow through and kind of trust that your, your, your swing dynamics and your impact alignment are gonna happen on their own without that anxiety of trying to find impact 
and, um, and kind of create strike artificially. So the exercise was to line up, um, line up four balls and the cane just so that we can see, having hit the first ball, where the divot is in relation to where it, where it was. So we started with a few chips, same, same progression as we did on the driving range, just chipping forwards. And then it became a longer chip. And then all of a sudden, the guy can hear ball then turf and see a divot. I mean, that was a, a breakthrough moment. This guy hasn't, hasn't taken a divot on the course, well, not after the ball anyway, um, for, for months and months. He's been trying to get away from the divot and scoop the ball in the air. So this was a brilliant moment. The, the sound and the feeling were, were undeniable. And of course, that progression continued and we ended up with these longer swings and more commitment. It didn't happen, you know, it didn't happen on the first ball. It took a few balls, but once, once we were able to get the, the mind away from that anxiety to hit it and commit all the way to the follow through, the, the sure enough, the dynamics that we created on the range started to appear on the course and we got ball first, then divot. As is often the case then, the situation was partly technical. So we needed to establish that first of all, we needed to understand what creates um, ball first, then divot, and then taking it out onto the course and, um, and getting the mind in the right place and being able to put uh, your attention where it needs to be, which is very rarely on the ball. If you've enjoyed this video, then please click subscribe and I'll keep you up to date with more coaching information. And if you really want to take your game to the next level, then please visit my website, golfcoach.online, where you'll see there my subscription channel, which is Golf Coach Access, which is all about building a, a golf coaching and education community and having really structured long-term programs. And the best thing is you can get immediate free access.